and hopefully you can see that I've uh, desoldered all these successfully. No broken traces or dodgy tracks anywhere. Fascinates me always. What have we got in this one? Let's just pop the bottom off. Got a bit, done a bit of a mad flux job there by the looks of it. Somebody has. Pins all look pretty healthy. Solder those tabs a minute. Just going to desolder these two and we'll pop it out. Let's say this one's not working on any of the um, frequencies and any of the bands, so it's highly likely that this that we've got shorts on all three of these. careful on these because these are quite fragile. Perhaps to heat the um, tab and not the board. This one's fighting, so I'm really reluctant to put any heat on it as such. Do not want this lifting. Okay, well, this side's definitely clear, so we can bend this one right up. Just straighten that up. Pop this edge out. I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of heat on this. And there we are. Damage free. So, what have we got? Let's give you the uh, Mullard module transistor reveal. There we go. Oh, okay. So we've got the. It's a bit of a smudged one there, but that looks like an AF116. Yeah, so again, we've got AF115, AF115, and AF116. Yeah, pretty standard stuff. As I say, I've got another one here. 
P1171, yeah. And this one's got um, 3116s in, but identical work module really. But this is one I've still got to do, so I'm not going to be uh, doing that one quite yet. So, yeah, interesting. So, uh, that one will be for another day. I just wanted to have a quick look just to see what was inside it. So nosy like that. Here's one I prepared earlier, <laughs> done by me last night. Nice bit of Sunday night work. Yeah. A mucky, uh, mucky board. This one. It's quite a tight hole there for some reason. I'm sure. There is a reason. Right. New module going in. Holes to line up. One side in. Two sides in. So I've got a bit of pressure on it from underneath. Gonna bend that tab back onto the board. There we are. Good to go. Just got to solder these back in now. on these because these are old pins. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with this, I'm just going to solder these back in a minute. Join me in a second. Everything is back together. All the wires on the switch bank now are soldered back on. Let's get you in a little bit closer there. So all of this all soldered back in together. I've got the, um, the car aerial antenna just disconnected for now. Just make sure it's not touching anything and also the... Uh, FM clip on um, 
terminal. That's not touching anything. So as far as I'm aware, everything's back together. I've left those two wires in underneath here, crossed over, because um, I've not had a chance to look at the schematic yet, and uh, to be honest, that was how it was originally, and I expect, to be honest, they both perform the same function. I don't know, but anyway, I've left them as they are. Um, apart from that, it's all gone back pretty easy. No real issues. So I've temporarily popped the knobs back on. <coughs> Being that I've not got any uh, VHF aerial attached at the moment, we'll start it in a medium wave. Let's pop some power on and see what happens. This is the moment of truth. So I'll zoom you back out of it. So I'm just going to pop a PP9 battery in. No bang yet. Bear in mind this radio had nothing before. No, not a dicky bird. Still nothing. <laughs> oh wow. That's the first. Interesting. So if that power socket's making continuity, right? I'm going to do a few more checks in a minute. So bear with me. 